Welcome everyone, I'm Archit Tashadri. Thanks so much for joining us for this special report. For the next 30 minutes, we're gonna focus on two topics. One being, why is Bangladesh's fertility rates significantly lower and how they've managed to set a benchmark. But first, we're going to talk about our other big story, another one of India's neighbors, China, this time making a huge quantum leap when it comes to supercomputers. Well, scientists in China say they have built the world's first machine that can compute many times faster than the current breed of supercomputers. Well, is this the new arms race? Well, it seems like China is winning the game compared to its competitors. China's Xinhua agency made the announcement Wednesday at the Shanghai Institute for Advanced Studies. Chinese scientists claim the quantum computers that they have developed is 24,000 times faster than the current line of computers. There's been an intense research on quantum computing technology and winning the race is considered crucial for countries that aim for global supremacy. Quantum computers can do infinite calculations at once, giving the country that has these computers a huge edge over others. Experts say that computers have the capacity to break encryption in less than a snap of a second, and it's encryption that is protecting most of our online data, including financial and military information. All right, so we've talked about supercomputers, so let's try to understand what exactly they are. Well, they're a powerful machine usually used by scientists to carry out complex calculations within a matter of seconds. But as we mentioned, a group of Chinese scientists claim they have built the ultimate computer that can conduct multiple complex calculations 24,000 times faster. Here's a report. <laughs> Imagine a computer reading through all the books in a library. Modern day computers should be able to complete the task fairly quickly, reading each book one at a time. But a group of scientists in China say that they have developed a machine that can read all the books in a library simultaneously. This is called a quantum computer. The quantum computing breakthrough has the potential to create massive disruption in the world of technology. The most basic quantum computer potentially can solve multiple complex calculations at once. So what's the potential of quantum computing? Greek-American engineer and entrepreneur Peter Diamandis says that the implications could be staggering. The rise of quantum computing could boost development of machine learning. Quantum computing could also contribute to the field of medicine and development of new drugs. Engineers and scientists with quantum computing could discover better materials leading to new inventions. While China may have a head start, government organizations like NASA, private companies like Google and several universities are also working towards development of quantum computing a technology that could spark a new wave of innovation in the 21st century. Bureau Report, we on. All right, so what exactly does all of this mean? And let's try to uh, make it easier for you and me to sort of understand this. We're gonna bring in our tech correspondent, Ankit Tateja, to give us a simpler explanation in sort of layman's terms. So Ankit, uh, uh, walk us through it. What exactly is this, uh, uh, this revolution that China claims it's made this leap with? Okay, so the, uh, so the term is quantum computing. I mean. It's very heavy in itself. For a lot of viewers, like they're not able to understand what quantum computing is. Forget how they will you know, get through us throughout the show. So let's simplify it for them a bit maybe. So let's take an example. There's so many files on a computer. How would a normal computer read it? One by one, it will take its own sweet time to read. When it comes to quantum computing machine, it will read all the files in one go, which means faster results. As we just understood in the package, like uh, there's so many books in a library. So one way is to read all the books and do it one by one. You will take your own time, maybe a day or a month for that matter. 
there's another way that you, you can read all the books in one go, and that's what the quantum computing promises. So basically, quantum computing will change the way information on a computer is processed, which means faster results. So that's what it is all about. So it's going to be more faster, efficiency, uh, you know, speed certainly. But uh, uh, you know, we, we spoke to a, a technology expert, and they actually uh, brought this question about, uh, suppose there's a car that's invented. It can go five, 6,000 miles an hour. Great. Speed is certainly important, but in our current infrastructure uh, in, in India, you may not be able to use such a car whether or not it can perform at that speed. So bringing it back with quantum computing, right. even if there is something like that, how are the practical purposes, how can it be used for, uh, for the, average, uh, the average nation, the average user who may benefit? Okay, so I will first take your first remark. You said it can promise anything, but what if it's too expensive? How it's going to be of use to normal people? Right. So whenever a new innovation takes place, a lot of money goes into R&D. And say for that matter, computer, the laptop that you have right now, when they were introduced, they were very expensive, like not a thing for a middle class. But eventually, you know, the cost came down, and now everyone has a laptop or a computer for that matter. Talking about the smartphones, when they were introduced, they were so expensive, no one could have imagined that smartphones would be available, say, for prices under rupees 10K. But it's happening now. So whenever a new innovation takes place, we have to give it some time to actually come out and show what it has, what kind of promises it can make. This is where the quantum computing machine is right now at. So it's in a very nascent stage, it's in a very beginning stage, and uh, it's coming out. And uh, eventually, today, so for that matter, quantum computing today could be of benefit to industries, the medical sciences, uh, the tech aviation, firm, the technology company. defense for that matter. Right. Eventually, later, maybe, it could be of use to normal people, but it will take some time. But today, yes, for industries, it's going to benefit them. No uh, doubt about that. All right, we'll have to wait and watch to see how all of that unfolds. So let's sort of uh, uh, give you a perspective of it as well, a, a quick uh, a one of one of what exactly is quantum computing. Well, as we mentioned, it is a machine that can compute 24,000 times faster than some of the other ones. It may also dwarf the power of existing supercomputers. It is a computer that uses quantum states, so think back to physics, those subatomic particles that we learned about when we were in school to store the information. Our researchers in China, as we mentioned, have built these to make the calculations using these particles so it can process data much faster than your typical switches in binary code, thinking those zeros and ones to store information. So let's uh, give you a perspective. How is it different than the regular computing? Well, as we've talked about, if you're going to a library or a bookstore, instead of finding one book at a time to find the book that you want, with quantum computing, it will read everything at once. So within a snap of a second, you get that information much faster. So again, efficiency, much more quicker to get that information, the potential leap of quantum computing. Now, other countries are also watching, the United States, Europe. Many of them are keeping a close eye on what China is doing. High-tech giants like Google, Microsoft, and IBM really paying attention of what China will be doing. So let me bring Ankit back in. China sort of doing this, you know, this leap as it claims. How will this impact, uh, you know, other countries? Are they going to step up their game, we think, or perhaps more collaboration uh, in the years to come? Well, China has come up with what they say is the world's first uh, quantum computing machine, but Europe and US, they're already working, they're already working with different researchers in that direction. But talking about the practical applications, so look at it this way, like we can say our computers are really fast, why do we need even faster machines? But if you look at it from the big data point of view, we have a lot of database today, there's a lot of data that is stored somewhere, say for that matter, phone records. Right. Uh, maybe search queries for that matter, transaction details climate data, surveys, geological surveys, and all that. When you talk about all those data, you need something that can perform faster. And you won't believe this. I mean, I was just thinking about like how, what, kind of you, what kind of advantages can we have from this quantum computing machine. You won't believe that we can actually increase the GDP for a country using quantum computing machine. How? Say, you can actually uh, target hyper-personalized advertising, which means more consumer spending. So you can actually exploit user behavior, user taste to target, to trigger, to activate hyper-personalized advertising. For that matter, elections. Political parties can actually exploit voters' behavior. They can, what their, what's of yeah, their interest, perhaps, to gauge that campaign. Absolutely, absolutely. And not only this, self-driving cars. We are right. moving towards the future. Self-driving cars are coming. Sure. When you are on the road, you want the car. There's a software. There's no one in the car. There's no driver. You want the machine to perform faster. Right. You can't be stuck. You can't wait for the signal. Okay, it's red. The car is stuck there. It's green. Let's move. You want it to perform faster. 
that's where quantum computing machine is required. All right. All right. Well, uh, before we sort of uh, wrap this segment up, we also have a